All right, cool. Hello, folks. Thank you for bearing with us. Apologies for the brief break. I'm making tea. Yes, tea was uh, needed. Uh, cool. Judd, uh, I don't, we haven't talked at all about the last case. I think yeah. the only question I had time for was how many weeks after this particular case do you think the last case takes place? Yeah, I think it's about two weeks. So I think what happens is, uh, like Drop was about to put his badge and gun down and walk away. And uh, the idea of going after people in the Ministry of Preservation kept him back. And they keep trying to figure out the wording of that mandate and how to get it together. And then uh, and it keeps getting put off. And then the other piece of paperwork that keeps going on is they keep finding new side businesses that are attached to the hive that because the hive was funding criminal activity can now be seized by the empire, the imperial government. And so like that paperwork just sprawls out and kind of becomes your life. And it's probably fairly miserable. And it's a lot of like, and, and, you know, you, you literally like turned down some kind of deal from an incredibly rich, you know, crime Lord who is now an iron hook only to see the worst of Imperial greed as like, you kind of chase these side businesses so that they can be seized. Um, and you are on your way. I think you and, and Maya are both like walking out of the Justice Tower, kind of exhausted. And a blue coat walks up to you. And uh, yeah, his, his name uh, is Nogs. I need a fresh sheet of paper for a new case. Excuse me for just one second. Yeah. What does Nogs the blue coat want? What district is he from? He is from Silkshore. He says, uh, are, are you inspector? And like, he almost says heartless Tui. He says, are you inspector uh, uh, Tui and, and Sergeant Aram? How old yes. is he? Oh, good question. How old is he? What does he look like? <laughs> uh, To you, to your eyes, he looks old. Um, he doesn't look old. He looks kind of young. Like he's not a rookie, but like Twice. it hasn't been it hasn't been ground out of him yet. You know, yes. like you can tell, like he hasn't had the big fuck you moment yet. That has to come when you're when you wear the the badge in this town, or when you're doing anything in this town. And. Uh, he says, listen, I've, I've got something and I think it's going to be a mandate. And I just wanted you two to see it first. Do you need us uh, to go to a crime scene or you got paperwork? Indeed. Paperwork? Oh, no, no. There's no paperwork yet. It's a body. I, I you know, it's it's just like a moment where Drav looks at Maya with like a genuine smile on his face and he goes, a body? <laughs> How novel! <laughs> uh, I, I put a hand on your shoulder and I go, bless you, Nogs. Lead the way. <laughs> so Nogs takes you to Silkshore, and I think there is this strip um, of really flashy uh, pubs and bars and clubs and uh, and cat houses, and uh, 
there's a, a a canal that runs along the back end of them where like during the day supplies come in and out and if if someone wants to get into one of those places in a discreet way this is like the back canal and you can see someone has a lantern up on a post and they've uh they've shaded it so that it's blue and and that's where the body is is floating um Actually, it's not floating anymore. They pulled it out of the canal. Uh, it's been there for a bit. And he says, uh, this is the stuff that's a little weird. And uh, they've got like, they, they pulled like a, a, a leather satchel uh, off this guy and it was sealed so no water got in. And in the satchel is a bunch of papers and it is plans. Like it only takes you a couple minutes to look through them and to put together very quickly that these are plans to sneak onto White Crown and kill the emperor during a visit. It shows like extra troops. And uh, and like you can see like the, their estimates for like how many troops he'll bring, uh, what ships will be in the harbor, how they'll get across the Bomor Bridge without anyone noticing. He says, did we do the right thing bringing this to you? I don't think Maya responds. <laughs> I think Maya looks to draw. Um, I mean, like I guess in my Drop mind has a carefully neutral face. Strash is like, but like Drop is just like. Mm. <laughs> I think Maya like hands over the sealed bag to Drop and says like, "How many muggers do you know that do not turn out the ins and outsides of a bag?" Zero. I find it almost somewhat convenient that this perfectly laid out plan is right here under our noses. It's almost too convenient. Yeah, it's almost too convenient. Who's the body? We, uh... We've got him... as a local bum named, like not bum, but his name is Skinner. Any uh, affiliation with the folks that run around here that you know of, if you know him by name? Wait, he said local bum, which district is this in? Silkshore. Uh, Silkshore. He belongs to some kind of cult. And I know as soon as you say that word, it, it summons the spook, the spook squad, so I don't want to use it. No. Don't, don't, don't do that. This is probably not cult activity. People that want to kill the emperor, even if they are religious fanatics, are very realistic. Uh, actually, I don't say those words out loud. I think what I say is like, even when you want to kill someone, uh, someone of great importance. Yeah, I'm, I'm very careful about actually speaking this with my voice. Uh, but I, I, I look at Nogs and I say, how many people have seen the papers? Just me and my partner. And I think, yeah. Don't put in, don't put what was on the papers in your report. We'll take, we, we will, we will run it up the chain directly. Okay. You did good. I actually smile <laughs> sad. Uh, so, Silkshore, huh? Who's my Who's my Silkshore replacement? Because Silkshore is the guy that that is currently our yeah. administrative assistant because yeah. he was going to get killed if I replaced him. And I got yeah. someone else, and I don't know if I, if I recall, they are not very good because right. uh, they're 
they were one of the people that didn't give me the people that I needed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the Silk Shore guy's name? Yes. Is that what you're asking? Uh, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, his name is Lewitt. All right, cool. I think I'm going to put in a request that Lewitt gets replaced. <laughs> but I nod my head. Yeah. And I think, like, his partner is a rookie. And he's like, sorry about him. He's brand new. He got pretty sick when he saw the body. He's been in the canal a bit. He did the right thing. Um, so are you I, taking I, this whole... I'm I'm addressing the kid, but it's pretty clear that I'm 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 also looking at the 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 the, the uh, Lewitt. Lewitt and Knox. <laughs> what a great name set. <laughs> oh no no no! Uh, so Lewitt is the guy from Silkshore oh. who you had. I see I see I see I see that dude's yeah, about yeah. to get fired, but that's cool. Uh, let's let's, <laughs> let's 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 keep on roll. All right, so I tell Knox I say uh, good work. Uh, I stop for a second and I say, uh, it, it takes a very special kind of blue coat to actually run this up the ladder. Thanks. Oh, you, you're welcome, Sarge. So, it, it, is this out of my hands? Is this all you now? Yeah, we'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. Just don't mention it in your report because people other than us are going to read that report. This one's going to go straight up the chain. Got it. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, so like, Maya, do you have anything else you want to do with this scene? Do you want to? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think like while you're having this sort of heart to heart about like, oh, no, we've got this kind of thing, right? Like, Maya's just like knees in the mud. I was <laughs> like, waiting for that spooky. <laughs> <laughs> like, Maya for sure looks like some kind of feral, like, swamp thing is she's like knee deep in uh, water, canal water, like, looking around for. It, like clues <laughs> cool or maybe uh, yeah uh, should I, do, just, I, I, I could i could do magical stuff i could attune to see what happened judd just so that we're clear if it's been a couple of weeks should we just like reset our stress and yeah oh, yeah, yeah yeah okay cool oh right okay in that case i super want to do some spooky stuff <laughs> should do some spooky stuff yeah, I feel like in that case, like, there's a moment where Maya, like, you're having this conversation and like, Maya just, like, wades into the canal and just, like, goes under, right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> to, <laughs> um, to attune to the, the water. <laughs> that's, oh, that's so gross. <laughs> it's really gross. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, the water is black here, right? Like, it's it's called the, the, the yeah. Oh yeah, all the better to attune with. <laughs> it's it's thick. <laughs> um, oh, that's so foul. <laughs> Jeez. It's okay. Like as soon as she goes under, like there aren't like bubbles or anything, so she's holding her her breath while she's <laughs> underneath there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, risky standard. I got a six in there. Yeah, so I think like, yeah. <laughs> Maya goes under, right? And then it's like black swamp water and then she like opens her eyes and then you get like sort of the violet haze like um, as she attunes to like the, the ghost field underneath the canal river to see what's gone on <laughs> with this body. Yeah. Um. So you see the body put in the canal um, and you can see the incision marks where the spirit was cut away. Ooh. Dang. So it's like you're looking for a limb and the limb has been chopped off. So you can like see what the reflections are, right? And it's gone. Oh, dang. Do I get a sense for, like, who, like, any vague impression of, like, who who this person, who the, who the person who did the dumping is? Like, is there any? No. Does it feel culty? <laughs> um, it feels like they were careful. Oh, okay. 
Uh, no? like that sort of thing. It's like, like the absence is so palpable because like yeah. there, there should be stuff there, but it's, it's not. It's just like, right. yeah. Right. I dig it. Right. Yeah, they, yes. Um, you, you also get the feeling that there's something higher that this guy had had some kind of tie to something else but because his spirit has been cut away it's just hard to say what like if his spirit was here you'd have the whole story you'd have like the murder and him and the links to different stuff and it's just like the thing you needed has been cut off Ooh, i have a question like <clears throat> Do I get the sense that like this is a thing they did to just avoid spooks in general and like folks who could read spirits in general, or does this feel a bit targeted to like oh no we knew that like the Severosi witch <laughs> was going to like be involved in this? Ah. Oh, that's interesting. I think it's more general than that. I don't think it okay. was. You don't get the feeling it was done for you, but it was definitely getting the feeling that someone was going to attune eventually. Red. Makes me feel a bit less nervous. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think like Maya comes up with like a <gasps> like gasp, it's like in her hair is like bedraggled and there's like sort of some growths of weed in it and that kind of thing. Um, and she just like gives Drav like a, a look. <laughs> that sort of... Drav is giving her a look, but you get that the look is maybe about two thirds because you just went into canal water. <laughs> yeah, yeah like... and I think, yeah. Nogs has a cigarette in his mouth, and when he sees you come out, it falls out. <laughs> and I think Maya like wrings her her hair a bit and like her clothes as she like sort of staggers out, very heavily weighed down by canal water. Um... Sorry, should I go? Nogs, did the bell ring today? Uh. Just for some old folks, nobody around here. I thought maybe the body drifted. Could be a couple days old. Okay, you can go. All right. And like, he walks away, like only taking his eyes off of Tui when he's a safe distance. <laughs> I feel like if Tui watches him go. <laughs> Just to freak him out that bit more. Oh. I think like, yeah, Maya sort of is still flicking water off and looks to drop and shakes her head and says like, they were, they knew what they were doing. What does that cut mean? Cut the spirit right off. Uh, whoever did this cut the spirit right off of the guy so he couldn't be traced. I, I was blind before and I'm blind again. No. No, you, you, you're telling me a lot. You're telling me he wasn't killed. He was assassinated. It's a good thing we know one assassin. That's true. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to say, um, can you make sure to get this information to the Imperial City as fast as possible? Of course. You know, there are assassin groups that are devout followers of Forgotten Gods. Maya looks to her head. <laughs> mm. I'll be back. Uh, Judd, I would like to go and encounter a nanny with a daughter, wherever the hell they may be. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, she, she answers the door. Oh, I didn't know if they were like, have like a schedule where they go to like parks or if they're out shopping or oh, uh, oh, it's fine. Uh, did you want to, did you want to like, cause I, I figure it's kind of late at night. Um, if you wanted to like go I'm knock on their on door. Doors. Cool. She looks at you and says, uh, is everything okay? Not sure, but I need your expertise on something. 
she says one moment and uh she says professor i'll uh i'm gonna take a walk with uh with elaine's dad i'll be gone for an hour if it's gonna be longer i'll i'll send word and she steps out she says let's take a walk i think we go somewhere that's safe it it it, it yeah. it's it doesn't matter if it's like a place where that job knows intimately that's got a whole lot of people talking to create that white noise effect. Yeah. Um, or, or um, if it's, you know, it's my place or whatever, but yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm a... It's a, it's, it's a plaza in charter hall where a lot of students chill. Um, Hopper used to chill here when he was going to school. Perfect. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out some paperwork and do that thing where I'm mostly looking around and like when people get close i just like casually fold stuff over and like smoothly like transition conversations or whatever but what i'm asking her to do is to take a look at this and tell me what she sees from her like areas of expertise right um yeah i'm, I'm showing her the plans yeah uh she looks them over and says uh This is a really ambitious plan. Someone put a lot of thought to this. Do you have anyone I should be looking at, even by rumor or reputation? Do you have anything you're seeing that isn't first obvious at first glance? I can tell you that they are probably involved um, with some sort of cult. Uh, they seem to be able to do that thing that some assassins can, which is not make the bell ring. Fortune roll. <laughs> yep, just just ignore me. Ign ignore my dice. Ignore I just rolled a one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely ignore me. Uh, well, uh, I don't know what to say about this other than it's a really well thought out way to kill a heavily guarded sorcerer on White Crown. Who could figure out something like that? Because if anyone could, fuck the Lamplex would have tried it two weeks ago. Or, I, I named some day when the Emperor may have actually been in town, which is probably years ago, actually, but... Yeah. Would they, though? This is not the kind of job you come back from. Right, that's what I'm asking. Who would who would be able to put the kind of resources into it to get this kind of... Just, if it's a skill that I need to track down, if it's a particular mentality, if it's anything at all you get, that's not effectively what I'm reading here. I gotta start somewhere and I gotta start fast, for obvious reasons. And, if I, and I, I start closing it up and I just say... You happen to be the only person that I know that went for a job that they did not expect to come back from. If anyone has insight into who's going to do this, I figured it might be you. When you're ruling like this, on this level, there are things you've got to think about. I'm sure there are pressures. I want, I, if, I, if I were looking into this, I would want to know what kind of pressures are on the emperor. Right? Who who could be mad at him right now? Who could be unhappy? The founding families of Duskval aren't a bad place to start. They just saw that the emperor can put out a piece of paper and have one of their own taken down. They might be antsy. After that, when you're when you're ruling like this, there are a couple of things you want to deal with. First, 
don't piss off the Severosi. It's just never worth it. Second, you want to make sure that that your day-to-day -day personal guard are people that you can trust, usually people from your village or cousins. And then you want to make sure that your military are people that you're moving around a lot. You don't want them to stay in one place because then they can get a balance of power and then find time to usurp you. Do you think the Scoblanders could do this? Plenty enough of them have lost people. They probably have enough reason to be willing to not walk away from a job. I think in 20 years, if Ulf Ironborn survives and is very successful, he might be able to put it together something this smart. But today, that son of a bitch is trying to figure out how to survive as a gang. You know, there are, there are criminologists who rate the gangs in tiers. Tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. Ulf is like tier one. He's pathetic. Okay, so we're aiming high. I don't know. I don't know who else would have the time and the, and the energy to do this. But it's not somebody that's small, is what you're saying. She looks at it and says, you've got troop movements, you've got really smart military assessments going on here. All right. Move your troops around a lot, huh? You okay. don't want a general squatting in one place and getting up a base of power. Generals are a real big problem. Admirals. Okay. Anyone with a lot of stripes and a lot of people who they might follow. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll walk her home. Cool. I ask inconsequential questions about my daughter. Yeah, she tells you about what she's learning in school. Okay. I let the conversation be casual. All right, cool. I'm good, Maya. I don't know if you're doing anything specific. Hmm. There are so many places to start and I have no idea where to begin. Oh my gosh. I guess needless to say, I didn't have anything specific in mind. I feel like Ace is always a good person to go to just to like sort of tip off for um, what's going on. Um, yeah. You know what we could do? Oh yeah? We should pick up two tickets to the Imperial City. Ooh, I'm on board. <laughs> I, I can't I'm tell if we're making Judd happy or confused. I'm Same. just shocked. I'm always shocked. <laughs> and I'm always pleased. I'm always pleased. I'm always happy and I'm always pleased. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, but... Do you want to go talk to Issa? Do you want to? Are you going right to the Justice Tower and getting this in a tube? Oh yeah. Are you going right to the yes. Lord Governor? Are you going right to the Lord Governor's office? I mean, you have the like, you you have the Lord Governor on your list of of uh, of buddies. So like, you can literally walk into his I, office. I don't like him. <laughs> no. I don't like him either. I totally understand, and you shouldn't. <laughs> I think it does make sense to at least like pop off some stuff to, to like we admitted to do paperwork last time I would feel bad if we did like at least do a little bit to alert um to this situation um oh and then my other thought is like Maya is or at least Lauren anyway is still curious about 
like how perfect the body setup was <laughs> in terms of like here is this foolproof plan for knocking off the emperor oh and they're, they've conveniently died and also they don't have a spirit and someone is left them there and didn't take all their stuff like it, it feels like th there's some there's some strings there that i feel like they can be pulled yeah um, totally because like who would want to do that for the emperor <laughs> or like you know i don't know um yep it's a problem <laughs> <laughs> these are the questions um, it's a puzzler we, we gotta solve yeah oh yeah um Yeah, but I think that, yeah, going to chat to Issa perhaps before we head off to the Imperial City makes sense, maybe. Um, that also provide for some useful <laughs> flashbacks if we need them to be like, oh yeah, I totally got Issa to hook us up with uh, these people while we were there. Cool. Uh, yeah, Issa opens up the door and says, uh, you, you smell like the canal. It's been a long day, so, uh, I didn't know you had a new mandate. Come in. Of course, thank oh, you. for God's sakes, take the boots off on the steps. <laughs> She's just like, okay, 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 okay. Like, takes off her boots. Maybe she slops off her coat, too. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <sort> of... <laughs> she, she, she gets you a towel. I appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, matter of fact, I think she, like, brings you up to her room and, like, gets you something that finds you something that fits. Oh, much appreciated. <laughs> um, um, so you're like, like you're like behind her changing. You oh, know, like the mod modesty. The the screen. Pull out screen, screen yeah. Pull out screen, yeah. Oh, red, yeah. I'm, I'm sure, like, yeah, hucking a uh, canal stage clothes like over the top, like whilst yeah, yeah, changing. <laughs> so uh, I didn't know you had a new mandate. What, what inspired you to jump into the canal? Well, I uh, wouldn't jump onto the into the canal if not for a good reason. Um, and well, long story short, uh, we found a conveniently scribed assassination plot to kill the emperor with it may as well have had a red bow tied around it. Um, it was found on a, the body of one Skinner of Silkshore, uh, who was without a spirit. And it's, it's like a long pause, like, by it's like, Isa? <laughs> like, <laughs> How did you find this body if there wasn't a mandate? Uh, well, we had um, a blue coat liaison when, uh, I believe his name is Mr. Noggs. Found it and alerted us. Do you know much about this Noggs person? No, I do not. <laughs> the Ricky. <laughs> I believe I, I said I, not quite, but yes. <laughs> I I don't know rank and file blue coats. Fair. <laughs> I um, so he he came and got you. He didn't kick it up his ladder. He came right to you. Uh, yes, and come to think of it, yeah, he was more than happy to get it off of his plate and onto ours. I bet. So what are you going to do with it? <sighs> well, that is uh, partially why I'm here, not just for a um, much appreciated change of clothes, but, well, it seems like things are coming full circle in the sense that uh, the rich ripe plums of this tree of corruption that's growing in the city um, are ripe, are coming to fruition. <laughs> there are families I feel are wanting to rock the boat again and to perhaps shake up the institutional order that is present in the city. I was wondering if you had heard of anything, any rumblings on your end? No, I mean, there 
there are a lot of rumors right now. It's kind of a weird time. Um, the, there are rumors. I mean, it's weird that there are rumors that the emperor is going to be visiting Deskwall soon. As in his, and then sort of just like sort of physicality and not like the, and sort of refers to the hologram that we engaged with. <laughs> holography. Not, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not through holography. I mean, setting foot for the first time since the lightning fences went up. And I can't help but wonder every rumor has a grain of truth behind it. Why now? Have you heard anything else about why, why the emperor is choosing now of all times to take foot out? I suppose the war has just ended in theory. The scuttlebutt is that he wants to make sure that he has the founding family's backing to start a war with Aruvia. I see. <laughs> Interesting. That's just a rumor right now. That's just a rumor. That's that's. Oh, of course, of course. Um, but I, I I appreciate the scuttle button nonetheless. Um, I was just I think like my finish is changing into like I don't know closer like a bit too short, <laughs> and uh, it sort of sits up from behind like the changing, the changing screen, and it's just like I. The emperor, as far as I know, is like an intelligent being. He, surely he must know the founding families are probably not. He's probably not in some of the founding families' good books. One of them tried to, well, more or less, he set power from him not that long ago. Yes. However, he, they didn't, and he had enough of displays of power in the taking down of that situation that people left the situation fairly frightened. I see. I suppose I can relate to being somewhat feared by the, the people around you and taking some comfort in that. I've had rumors that I'm some people think I do not have a heart. I've heard the nickname. I kind of like it. <laughs> not going to lie, I, I can think of worse nicknames. Of course, the rumors of my witchiness are greatly exaggerated. <laughs> Is your hand okay? <laughs> I was about to say, are they? Are they really though? <laughs> and I think, like, yeah, my for sure is still wearing like the swamp glove over her hand, and uh, says, "So I'll." It's. Uh, I feel like this scarring will be somewhat sustained. It perhaps is a, a permanent fixture to my person. But thank you for inquiring. <laughs> it's interesting that you should say your measure of the emperor. I've never met him through holography or in person. What was your, what did you think? I think like it, I think Maya tries to think back to it, and she has a flashback to like Drav looking, whilst trying to sort of maintain <laughs> composure, was like really scared shitless, and you know like the woman who came in to sort of say like look this safe to be in front of the emperor, like be on your best behavior, around her, yeah. and like standing in front of him and his like holographic presence. and then sort of like cuts back to the present, and Maya's like it seems fine, <laughs> like. He, uh, he seems what? He seems fine. 
Okay. No, I wasn't. I wasn't asking how your favorite auntie is doing back at home. <laughs> I asked you what the measure of the undying emperor was. <laughs> what do you What do you mean by measure? Listen, if you don't want to talk about it, we don't have to talk about it. I. Uh... Hmm. I think I give my like sort of cocks her head at uh, Ethan. So it's like, uh, well, he. Uh, I know at least that we have a uh, somewhat secure connection to him, and he. Hmm. He is one for prioritizing uh, order, the status quo around around here, so to speak. I perhaps I'm at a loss for words because uh, he's exactly what I expected. Someone who is rule <laughs> rule abiding by the rules that he has written. Um, very old, very ancient, and uh, very eloquent. What are you going to do now? You know, I stopped asking myself that question a long time ago. Time check. It's been exactly one year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least for at least six months. Um, yes, but sometimes six months feels like a decade. Yeah, a decade. Yeah. I've aged like a decade <laughs> in the last year for sure in real life. Um, yeah. I think like Maya again, like sort of brings some canal muck from her hair and says, "Like, well, I feel like now's a good time to visit the Imperial City." <laughs> so, you're taking this over the Lord Governor's head. <sighs> I suppose when he put it that way. Yes, although he is such a drag. He has gotten in the way more than he has been useful, if, in my blunt and honest opinion. He's a... All right. But if I was of going course... To... Oh, of, of course, if uh, I, I would, of course, take your advice in the counter opinion you know these streets better, better than i do no if that's what you think you're going to do that's fine is there a member of the silver nails or, or maybe someone who you've run across i'd prefer a severosi if possible who would you think would be a good bodyguard if i was going to hire someone I think Maya nods, and I, I don't want to... Oh. Just so I'm clear, for her? For for Issa? Judd, who's yeah, the bodyguard for, for? For Issa, yeah. Okay. I'm very nervous to respond, just because I, I feel like it's going to end poorly <laughs> for the person that I, I talk about, but I feel like... Um, Maya's brain would automatically go to Suresh. Um, so I think like she like nods and says like, oh, the they lead a Suresh is an upstanding um, person. And if not her, then I'm sure she can recommend someone. Okay, thank you. They meet uh, at the Mustang. <laughs> yes, I'm aware. <laughs> I wouldn't be a well. good I wouldn't be a good di diplomatic attaché to Severos if I didn't know that. Oh, of course, of course. I I apologize. I did not mean to uh, discount <laughs> the time you spent here. Good luck, Maya. Thank you. And to you. Uh, why do you need Why do you need a bodyguard? Just out of curiosity. The Severosi inspector 
who I had a key role in getting a position after a solid year of bringing down or harrowing the rich and powerful of Duskval just told me that she's going to go over the Lord Governor's head and go right to the Imperial City because there is a possible assassination. There is no possible. There is a leak. <laughs> because there is a consp because there is a conspiracy to assassinate the Emperor. I think Deskval might be getting a little bit less safe soon. I think Maya has that face that like you've just been told off by your mom, <laughs> but she's like not angry. She's just disappointed. Um, I think I might want to invest in my own safety. That sounds wise. Good luck. Safe journey to I see. Thank you. And same to you. Uh, stay safe. <laughs> and uh, if I will, I don't know. Uh, I guess hang out there for a bit or leave with. Yeah, I think. <laughs> leave with a change of clothes. Cool. Uh, are you folks heading to the Imperial City? Is that the next? Is that the next scene? I think it is. Judging by Strash's big grid. I'm 100% in. <laughs> I, I think we okay. need to have like a cool train scene where you and I are in a dining car oh, having a discussion about... I think Drav does that thing where he fills you in on the political state of the local stuff. And he knows that there's been some bad blood between... Um, so, in essence, most of the cities run on Leviathan blood. And there's been some bad blood between the Eruvians and Duskwall, which is the major provider uh, of, of uh, Leviathan, process Leviathan blood to, to, like, that's where the docks are, that's where the ships go out and come back, that's, that's where the stuff ends up. Um, so he knows that there's been some, some beef, like, if there is going to be a war between Eruvia and the Empire... There can be a lot of pretexts for it and a lot of problems with it and things like that. But in the end of the day, it's going to be about like it, it's effectively an oil war, right? Like it's an, in the, in the sense that it like it's a Leviathan blood war. It's about the stuff that runs everything, right? Um, but that's that doesn't leave us with any more suspects except for the fact that if somebody, so none of us, n nobody in the inspector's tower has heard that the Emperor is coming to town, right? Which, uh... Which tells me that the people that may have started putting together those plans in order to know where, like, additional deployments and stuff are have to be getting this information from something, which means that, by definition, the Governor's office has a leak if it's not the Governor himself. So, uh... Going to Imperial City, I think, is the right move. Sounds good. I think that probably helps Maya, who was just reminded that uh, she is tied to a community of people. <laughs> and that community may get in like, a bit of hot water if um, she continues to be super reckless. <laughs> but if Drava's like, nope, this is right, we're good. Maya's like, heck yeah, let's, we're, we're, we're right. <laughs> this is one of those, like, we go to the end and we find out where this leads and damn it all, you know, like burn all the bridges as we get there. But yeah, right? Totally. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The CGI for the Imperial City in this show is absolutely amazing. I just want to assure everybody. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, uh, the the Imperial City uh, comes, so comes up on the uh, horizon. And in the center of it is this uh, tremendous tower called the Astral Spire uh, that is that 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 reaches into the clouds. And unlike uh, Duskfall, that has these fences, right? Um, the Imperial City has an electric umbrella that comes down off of the Astral Spire uh, and keeps the ghosts out. 
Damn. Yes. Yes. Um, and I think, I mean, we know you know one group of people here, right? Because the because you sent the rates here. Yep. I don't know if they were back in town after a couple of weeks or not, though. I think they've stayed. I think they've kind of settled down in uh, Imperial City. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, do you contact someone in the Imperial hierarchy to meet you? Like, what do you... What are you doing? I mean, you were trained as investigator here, Lauren. I think this may be actually Drop's first time in Imperial City. So he's all just like, whoa! Like, looking around like a tourist, like, what? You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, I, he I guess whispers to you, it's like White Crown or Charter Hall, but like a whole city. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. It's quite impressive. I, I guess, yeah, I guess if I trained here, perhaps like a, an old professor or something like that, perhaps we could have like just arranged to meet up with someone I personally know or yeah, someone sounds more good. like, uh, oh, Fred. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Uh are, are we going to be here? Are, are we going to have a formal meeting at the palace? I think is what Judd was asking. Like the oh, the, I see, I see. The next day or two. Yeah, or I mean, do I, we, you, do we you're show here up for and don't tell them? Right. Ooh. Oh, that's a good question. I was like, sensibly, sensibly you'd want to arrange a meeting before you made that long trick. <laughs> around like the, the coast but on the other hand we're very reckless so i could see a case for for both that is rocking up and be like yeah we'll we'll figure it out or sort of arranging it ahead of time to to get an official meeting i feel like an official meeting is more on tone perhaps or it's probably it's the correct play right but yeah. that's also paperwork it wouldn't take a lot of arm twisting to convince job to to go and be reckless i do after all have <laughs> reckless as well yes. and i could see totally a great scene where we just like walk up to like the guard's office and be like mm -hmm, sup like show more badges lean over put a thing in his vacuum tube just nod wait another hour <laughs> it just seemed pretty fun <laughs> do you know who we are yeah no no <laughs> well or at least drama he says that right before he's gonna shoot someone <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that what you want to do? Do you want to do you want to put a a a, a, uh, a message in the in, in the vacuum tube of uh, of the Inspector General of Imperial City? Yeah, it sounds, it sounds rad. Awesome. <laughs> Eyes only. Cool. Uh, cool. 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 Um. I think you wait there all day and you don't get a response. And uh, when you head back to your, when you head back to your hotel, um, she's waiting for you there. Is it the uh, lady that teaches introductions or like the head of the emperor's captain of the guard? Yeah, or? no, it's, uh, it's, it's the inspector general of Imperial City. Her name is Amar. And she is uh, a a Unity War veteran who uh, is is burned over half of her body, and uh, is intense. Uh, she's got short, short white hair, and uh, you know, kind of shaved on the sides, and then like kind of like a long floop. And yeah, she's in your hotel room when you get there. Oh, in the room, dang. <laughs> I'm seeing uh, images of Spider-Man and uh, from Far From Home and, and uh, right, right. Nick Fury. <laughs> there, especially that moment where Maya feels like she's seen a ghost, right? Like, not super expecting anyone to be in there. It opens the door and has that initial like, <laughs> like jump scare, and then it's to like right herself and. Yeah, I mean, she's got like the Imperial uniform on. You know, uh, she's the Inspector General. She's a badass. Uh. 
I feel like my say is like Inspector General, I apologize uh, for not greeting you, not being here to greet you. Would you like some? Uh, I, I guess it's a beverage. <laughs> like, there is it like? I don't Why know. Why <laughs> are we not communicating over normal lines? Why did you take a train all the way from Duskval? Well, the simple answer is trust. There is a leak. Um, what did you find? I think I, this is right. I, we get that cool shot, of like sort of sliding across, like the, or handing out like the, the packet. Um, still a bit canal scented. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think she like literally like picks it up and smells it and said, did you fish it out of one of your canals? Uh, we did indeed. Um, it was found upon the body of a um, local in Duskwall. Someone, mm -hmm. uh, someone who cannot be traced back. Uh, <laughs> we uh, cannot trace back exactly who did it, but we have suspicions about, yes, a, a leak. Hence why this is so detailed and, and uh, well thought out. Founding families, it seems, are not happy. She looks up at you when you say that. Why do you think that? Why do you think it's the founding families? Uh, I think, like, uh, Maya strikes her cleaned coat and uh, says, well, if you look at the evidence, Rowan Tower is fallen. Um, families dealing in ghoul and other such drugs, Lord knows what they have the potency to do, but they seem very important. You don't think the example you made of the Rowan family was enough to deter the rest of the rest of them? I think this is the first time Drav opens his mouth and, and he just looks at her and says, ma'am, you're asking us for conclusions before we've investigated the case. Maybe at I know. the end of the mandate. Ah, there we go. What do you think is going to happen the first time you flash a mandate and it gets back to the Lord Governor that is a mandate he never saw? Violets to draw, like, yeah, I'm really out of Ma'am, <laughs> our mandates are not signed by the Lord Governor. Quite frankly, that's not my job to care about. That's your problem. All right. I'm going to issue you an imperial mandate to find whoever is behind this threat to the undying emperor. Uh, I believe you already know Commander Telsius. From the Quicksilver Guard? Uh, yes, we are acquainted. <laughs> he is he is already in Duskval. I think uh, he'll be your contact. And the cover will be that you have been issued uh, a direct order to aid Telsius in making Duskval safe before the Emperor lands. That's your cover. Do you understand? I understand. And good to know the rumors are true in terms of the, the Emperor taking a wee visit to Duskwall. This damn city leaks like a sieve. Indeed. Dust, like a Duskwall gondola. It's a, <laughs> it's a barrel filled with holes, and in that barrel are rats, indeed. Hmm. And canal water. <laughs> there is a train leaving at dawn tomorrow. You will have a car to yourselves and your mandate will be inside. Thank you. Do you need anything else? No, I appreciate the offer, but I think 
we'll, we're, 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 we're okay. Hmm. You can see she likes that answer. She says, <laughs> they're going to teach about the two of you in investigative textbooks someday. God, I hope not, says Drop. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. Maya Lekway stretches her, like, ghost <laughs> Kotar hand. Yeah, I think, like, she doesn't even notice that. Uh, Amara just, just notice. She I mean, says, she, uh, hangs out, she says words like Quicksilver Guard, like they're not effing terrifying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Right. And, uh, well, uh, yeah. I think I'll, I'll, I'll thank her for her time. She, like, she didn't have to come over here personally, but she did, and it's appreciated. No, thank you for your discretion. Your work in Duskball has has made the Empire a more secure place. I'm uh, I'm glad it's all it's all for it's not for now. Drop looks tired. Drop looks yeah. at Maya's arm. <laughs> Drop looks at the, the 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 vial she carries around her neck. He shakes his head. <laughs> Doesn't say anything though. You know, it's not the kind yeah. of thing that that expects a response. <laughs> yeah, and she uh, she walks out. So our train is due tomorrow morning. It's done. Yes. What is there fun to do in Imperial City? <laughs> it's like a montage cut to just letting <laughs> loose in Imperial City. <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. <laughs> that totally has to happen. Smash cut to what? big bags under eyes, drinking coffee no, in, the, yeah. in the train car. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Wearing some very dark glasses. <laughs> cool. I, I don't think it's anything and... specific. It's just, uh, I, I think if Drop's never been to Imperial City, he has to like hit the town, right? It's like the rules. Oh, totally. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Saint Guard said, "I wonder what the tourist board of Imperial City is like." And I think it, the 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 tourist board would like the signs would say something like, <laughs> "Welcome to the city. Why are you here?" <laughs> like it just, I don't think it's a beautiful place and it's a majestic, but I don't think it's friendly or welcoming. Uh, I think it's it's a it's a seat of power of the Imperial government, and it's it's. It's as terrifying as a uh, as an undying emperor. So, yeah. But if you've gone to uh, if you've gone to to inspect your school here, students notoriously, especially after freaking finals or tests and other things, have celebrations, oh, yeah. find ways to relieve stress, and so on and so forth. So, I am betting that Maya actually knows. What to do in Imperial City, even if there's only like five things. Oh yeah, I feel like that's because of that student dive bar, right? Like. <laughs> oh totally, totally, totally. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that there's nothing here. Uh, I'm just saying it's an intense place, and like you, you find a place in the shadow of the spire that is uh, where and I think there are a lot of uh, of of Deathlands explorers uh, in the city um, because they they go out in their skyships. So, uh, <laughs> there is for yeah. sure a conversation between Maya and someone in the sky ship where she's like, No, 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 you don't explore the wastes. You, you like, that's a tourist thing to do. <laughs> yeah. So I've actually like gone out there on a horse kind of thing and, yeah, for sure yeah. get into like a drunken argument with the. <laughs> With them about it, <laughs> I love it. You you get into a you get into an argument with Captain Soon, who's a sky pirate. Oh, Fred. <laughs> and uh, yeah, totally, totally, about uh, who 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 take, has a riskier time uh, going oh, yeah. into the, the Deathlands. Uh, you or Captain Soon? Awesome. I feel like Soon's awesome. like, oh, there was this one time where like yeah, three ghosts came out. I'm like, ah, oh, three ghosts is nothing. <laughs> I was like being tailed by five, and I took out all of them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Totally. I love it. Awesome. Awesome possum. Uh let's uh I think it's it's uh 
just like Strash said, it, it's it's you know staying up all night in in crazy Imperial City bars and and talking to and drinking with Sky Pirates, and then uh, cut to uh, your Imperial uh, you know rail car travel car uh, and uh, a servant bringing you coffee and uh, you guys just exhausted as you make your way up the western shore of Akaros back towards Duskval. Uh, and then you're back in Duskval. Uh, <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> it, probably, it, it probably seems super small to Strash after seeing like the Imperial, like the, the Imperial Spire would, would like squat on a district, you know, like it's a district sized building. Uh, and now you're back in this, you know, the, the dark jewel of Akaros. I, I feel like it's the kind of place you can smell like before you hit it too, right? So it's like, oh yeah, that's a sinking feeling of like, ah, oh, we're back, like hits you miles out of like the actual city because you just smell like totally. the, the dusk bowl. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a swamp. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you you the 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 train car goes down because uh, you're you're heading into a swamp. Uh, absolutely. But uh, yeah, there's also something about it. You know, the the goats are bleeding and and uh, and I don't know. You know what's what's hilarious is none of these are what we today would consider charming terms. But I swear, drama is like. Oh, it feels like home. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> totally. The goats totally, are bleeding. Totally. The mushrooms are rotting. It's wonderful. Yeah, my my yeah. grandfolks my grandfolks live in a place with a lot of like geothermal activity. So like a good distance out, you get that whiff of like rotten eggs, and you're like, ah, yes, <laughs> this is uh, this is brings back good warm feelings. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> um, and so there's something about the Imperial City too, where crime is strangled uh like there isn't even enough freedom for a criminal activity to really cultivate you know what i mean so what the like hell are the wraiths doing there right that's a terrible uh, place to live yeah if if you're subtle i mean i think i think they're a a pretty subtle gang they are uh so so i think they they could do pretty well in a place like that um, a very rich place where criminals aren't really expected to be necessarily, and they've got, yeah, I don't know. I think they 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 could do well in a place like that, but uh, yeah, fucking Bajo Baj would be shot in the head in like twenty seconds in that town. Like it just wouldn't even. You just wouldn't. People like him aren't allowed to exist. Uh, so there is that kind of. Hey, that's you know I don't know. It is what it is. I'm not going to tell you how to feel, but it, it's interesting. Uh, this explains why assassins are not coming after the emperor there. Right, right, right. Uh, cool. You are back. You've got a mandate. Uh, Commander Telsius uh, left a note with your with your uh, with your clerical admin that. Uh, you know, letting you know where he's staying in a in a in a in a hostel. In a well, no, not a hostel. He's renting a room nearby. Red. And he'll be around to help you whenever you want. What's the first job? That is a good question. Indeed. And keep in mind that the cool thing about this thing is that it does have types of jobs, right? Um, you can, uh, where is it? You know, capture, legwork, patrol, raid, stakeout, Go undercover. Um, I think we got to do some legwork. Mm. 
we don't have enough leads to do most of the other ones, right? So right, right. I think that if you and Scary Idris Elba um, went to take a look at maybe the mystical side of things or something like that, it could be a potential. I think that Drav wants to go dive into Silk Shore and see what I can pull up on Skinner. Um, the other angle that we could try to work is we could take a look at political machinations of the the high muckety mucks or honestly i like the rubians for this i really do but i think that they're subcontracting whoever whoever's doing it is subcontracting out right like uh or there is also the angle of we could try and figure out who the hell leaked the information uh, mm. my suspicion is that it's in the governor's palace uh but because let's okay so when we put rowan away Rowan is Rowan. Rowan himself was less of a problem than Lizette, right? Like, Lizette was kind of the muckety-muck planner of that. But during the course of trying to take Lizette down, we found out that, like, the captain of the guard was involved and a whole bunch of other stuff. So there's a whole bunch of strings tied around the governor and that sort of, like, level of power. Like, the McClellans were involved, a whole bunch of hoopley hoopla and whatnot. Um, there, there's... There, there is some dirt there that we could dig through to see if we happen to find the grub, but my gut tells me that it's probably it's either Iruvians doing something or somebody finding the Iruvians a, a, a convenient scapegoat in order to mm. do something and be like, eh, they'll blame the Iruvians. So totes. Um, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we can investigate, but we have no leads, per se, which means that legwork <clears throat> is our only option, really. Mm. Yeah, totally. The other option is... I, I don't know what time it is. I'm sorry. I never keep track of time when we're playing this. Yeah. Um, we could call it here and then go over what we want to dig through before next time. That's a possibility. How are folks feeling? I feel good, but I I I feel like that's a fine session. So I'm I'm fine with with ending right there. So uh, and I think starting next time, like in the first, like I feel like we've introduced the job, we've introduced the the mandate. So starting next time on the on the next on the operation would be kind of cool. I think uh, so. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, you we'll need some time then. to well over the notes I took. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Can't wait to do more spooky ghost stuff. Uh, yes. All right. Do we want to do XP's real quick? I can start. Right, since oh, I'm yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, I have my sheet up. All right. So yep. uh, I don't think I actually made any desperate rolls. I think that was all Maya, right? Yes. Yeah, so I think I did, did I do one or two. I don't remember. You did one testify that I'm seeing right now. It might be two. I don't know. I think it was the one. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so, you honorably did your duty in service to the Imperium, or you did what's right? Uh, I definitely did my duty. I'm not sure I did what's right. Yep. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm going to take in XPs, and I'm marking in conviction, because holy shit, do I need more testify. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, next up. Uh, you express your beliefs drives heritage or background. Yes. Heck I, yeah. I, I mean, yes, right? We got a scene with my daughter. Uh, daughter. Uh, <laughs> but I think was... Drav, Drav definitely had the big, no, this is what we do. This is why we do it. Uh, oh, totally. And, that was amazing. Uh, and last but not least, you struggle with issues from your vice or traumas. Uh, yeah, I would like to say that for traumas, my obsession definitely came into play in a big way. Uh, mm -hmm. Got to fight with Maya over it. Um, I don't know that I struggled with issues of my vice, but but I definitely, you know, reckless and obsessed is is. Oh yeah, I think like jumping on a train, like that. Ah, fuck, I will just go to the Imperial City and knock on the door. <laughs> Hi, I'm the head of the Imperial stuff. What the hell are you doing to me? I don't know, ma'am. That's your job. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like going to their doorstep and not even being like, oh, we're here, we're here, we're how we can help. It's like, nope, this is your problem. 
it is on you to tell us what to do. I, I tried the most polite way of saying, look, they pay me to do a specific thing. I'm doing my job. Just please do your goddamn job. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, all right. That's it for me. I'm done with the XP. Bye. I take it away. Red. So I marked my disparate action. Honorably did a DD in service to the Imperium where he did what's right. Oh, yeah. I feel really dirty about <laughs> the end of the last case. But we total, definitely did it in service to the Imperium. And I think, like, going over the Lord Governor's head feels like, in a way, like, also service to the Imperium, because we're looking out for the Emperor, who pays, presumably pays us. <laughs> I have no idea. Actually, the Governor pays me, because I'm technically still a blue coat. Probably. <laughs> I might get an additional stipend from being a liaison, but I think I'm a yeah. city. Yeah. You are, technically. That I mean, that <laughs> that's why people can put pressure on your job is because, and you, and there, there is no such pressure on Maya's job um, unless she like really goes after the Lord Governor himself, right? Um, also, dang, I'm so glad that I took some ticks off of the drop gets fired clock <laughs> based on how we're going about this. I think it would be really interesting to see what Maya would do with Nogs as a sidekick. Um, I mean, if drops gets fired, that's that's what that's what's happening. <laughs> Excellent. I'm sorry, man. We're doing what? I, <laughs> oh my what? god! <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, we're going in there. I'll use my ghost hand to set the place on fire. And then you go in the then like and question him. You got that? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I kind of stopped understanding at the words ghost hand. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah, I think it would be delightful to see like a case with Maya with a different liaison. It would be a completely different dynamic. Oh my god, yeah. That, oh, that's I, so funny. It's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of, expressed, expressed, yeah, expressed uh, beliefs derived heritage background. I feel like... I feel like we got a fit bit of that. I'm just trying to rack my brain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, oh, we, yeah. We, we could talk with Issa, I thought. And um, um, going out in the death lines and shooting stuff with a fire hand. <laughs> and there's that crazy shit, yes. <laughs> and, uh, oh, and getting into a fight <laughs> with an air captain about who's the bigger badass yes. in the death lines. <laughs> yes. That was blunted. Um and struggled with issues from visceral trauma during the session. I for sure was trying to lead in a lot into the reckless stuff. Like, yeah, just d dumping into the canal and using ghost powers. <laughs> yes, that is totally reckless. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I don't know if I did anything else that was super reckless. Um, no, I think that was the main one. That was the main one. Yeah, that's and that's me. Um, I would also say that that going over the Lord Governor's head was a bold move. That was, oh, yeah. could, could be seen as reckless. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, Judd, you you flagged that pretty hard. You're like, let, let me just get this straight. <laughs> Are you willing to do oh, this? Yeah. Understanding the consequences, Maya's just like, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, we having put it that way, still, yeah. <laughs> having Issa go right. Well, I'm gonna bodyguard, and I will, because <laughs> clearly you are not a good friend anymore to me. <laughs> oh, red. Okay, yeah, that's all my XPs. All right, cool. And cool. then, of course, our mandate gets XPs. Yep. Uh, enforce the law or advance the progress of the mandate. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that, that that's a twofer. Uh, yes, although we reset back to tier one for the mandate. I'm going to clear our duty, clear our heat, clear our wanted. Go ahead. And, and do, I, do I clear the XP, too? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we reset to zero. Okay. So um, boom. we'll talk about what we want to take as our additional boxes and a power, but it cool. might just be efficiency because that's what we always run. Cool. Uh, contend with challenges above your current station. Two for two. Yeah. Yep. Uh, bolster your unit's reputation or develop a new one. Do uh, tell. Ambitious. Honorable or team player? I mean, I think I think you did both. I think you're in line to like develop a new reputation too. Uh, so I think that's a two for easy. Um, express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential I, can nature I, can I make of the a unit. Suggestion? I feel like there's a yeah. morph, right? Because like ambitious means we are punching above our weight category, right? And I think right. that 
that might be fair, but I think we've morphed from ambitious to reckless. Like, at this point, we don't even bother understanding that we're punching above our weight category. We just go for people. That is what that scene with um, the Hive Lady was yeah. about. She's like, in Duskfall, everything is business. I'm like, no, it's not. This is personal. Cool. I'm going to put reckless instead of ambitious. Hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> Love it. Love it. That's so cool. Uh, express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of the unit. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, they're so at good. it again. They're fucking at it again. Actually, <laughs> my favorite piece of this new case, by the way, this new case, oh my god, it gives me life because uh, Drob has been like, our mandate is what? Make peace and what? Like, and then he's like, there are demons over. Th I don't, I can't. And then you're just like, there's a body. And Drive is like, there's a body. <laughs> but like, my favorite bit is that we've gotten to the point where other blue coats are like, this looks like a U case. Like, <laughs> right? Like, they don't even bother going to their station chief or anything. They're just like, I'm just, mm -mm. so. <laughs> and Drive's just like, yes. You are correct. <laughs> so clearly you have a good head on your shoulders. Let me promote you. So Yeah. When I when I came up with the case, I was like, oh, Strash is gonna be so happy that it starts with a body. I can't wait to I can't wait to <laughs> unveil that. I've been waiting for like a month to fucking unveil that opening. So nice. Plus one. Cool. Uh, All right. Cool, cool. So that's uh the last case, huh? The last case. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thumbs up. Thank you. All right, cool. So uh, we're going to do our, our cool outro. Should I should I kick us off? Yeah, go for it. All right. I have been Strash. You can find me on Twitter at Strash A. Uh, I design games. So uh, you may or may not have heard of Scum and Villamy, Band of Blades, or Into the Dark. Um, yeah. Uh, you should you should check out some off guard games and you should come back in a couple of weeks. Uh, fun fact: we've actually been talking about shows in the actual play future, so there might be at least one or two more sh shows starting probably uh, within a month. Uh, so keep your uh, eyes peeled and ears open, and there should be some sweet, fun new news about that. And uh, with that, I will pass it off to Lauren. Yes, I have been Lauren. I use she, they. I am at the Stray Kiwi on Twitter, which should be right below me. If... Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, I likewise designed some games. I most recently have designed Girl Underground, which is Alice in Wonderland, PBTA, uh, game of whimsical self discovery and fucking up the patriarchy. So those are, if you, there are those two things, then it might be for you. Um, uh, dang, yeah. Otherwise, I'm just, Processing this, uh, this is the last case. <laughs> like, ah! I felt like I'm gonna have to go through a lot of like sort of debrief, like coming down off of like a, but it's been a wild ride yeah. for sure. Uh, how about yourself, Jed? Yeah. Did you hand it off? Did oh, I, I did. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm Judd. Uh, uh, he, him, and uh, yeah, I love that that we're and I think I don't know. I just love that we're bringing it to a close. What I'm just excited. So I, I, I don't know. What is uh, what is was that Neil Gaiman quote? Uh, I, I love a good ending more than you know a good beginning. Give me a good ending anytime. Uh, you know where you are with an ending. And I think that's cool. Uh, and uh, I'm at Judd of Cryos, which is uh, should also be right under, right under my face right now. And I've got a, a podcast called Daydreaming About Dragons. So uh, if you'd like to hear more about the process of making these games happen and, and techniques I use and stuff that factors right into these games, uh, if, you tech, if you put in the search terms Daydream About Dragons, you'll probably find it. Uh, and if not, you'll find lots of people who actually go online and talk about Daydream About Dragons, because apparently that's a thing that happens a lot more than I thought it did when I made the, when I made the podcast. So there we are. Cool. All right, and with that, hopefully we'll see you in two weeks. If not, you'll see notifications on our Twitters when the next game should be. So yes. thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for being awesome in chat. And uh, 
see you all next time. Heck yeah.